Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made a way for me. We are talking about the basic fundamentals of faith. And let's go to Hebrews 11. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. I have heard people say that God created the world out of nothing. No, he created out of something you can't see, which is faith. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. It's impossible to please him without it. Impossible. Why? That's the divine connection. And he is out to bless that's his big thing. <laughs> he started this whole thing blessing everything he created. And then he blessed his man and his woman. And, and they messed up. He started right then to get that blessing back. What did he do with Abram? He blessed him. Well, he really blessed him when he became Abraham and he got into covenant with God. He yeah. blessed him coming in and he blessed him going out and he blessed him and he said, I'll bless those that bless you and I'll curse him that curses you. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Bless, 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 bless. That's what he does. Yes. And that's the divine connection to that blessing is the covenant promises of God. It is faith that receives it. It's faith that holds on to it. It's faith that passes it on down the line. Amen. Faith receives healing. Faith receives miracles. Faith receives finances. Faith is the connector. That's the reason it is so important to teach it and preach it. Amen. So I'll give you these, and I'll give you the verses, but we won't take time to go back through and read them all. Ephesians 2, 8, you can't be saved without, without faith. And uh, Romans 1, 17, Galatians 3, 11, Hebrews 10, 38, Habakkuk 2, 4, you can't live the Christian life without faith because the just shall live by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 6, and 7, you can't walk the Christian walk without, with, without it. Amen? All right, 1 Timothy 6, 12, 2 Timothy uh, 4, 7, you can't fight the Christian fight without faith. Fight the good fight of faith. What is the good fight of faith? It's a fight you've already won. <laughs> you, you're the, you win before you ever get in it. Amen. Amen. If you're conscious of faith all the time. So, 1 John 5, 1 through 4, can't overcome the world without faith. Romans 14, 23, whatever's not of faith is sin. 2 Corinthians 1, 24, you can't stand without faith. Romans eleven twenty, you can't quench the fiery darts of the enemy without it. Ephesians 6, 16, you can't be blessed without it. Galatians 3, 13 and 14. In the full armor of God, the Spirit of God said through the great apostle Paul, above all taking the shield of faith. Above all. And he was describing the army of a Roman, uh, armor of a Roman soldier. And, and the Roman soldiers had what they called, you're not, you're not talking about a little shield like this. They, that, that their, their shield 
stood taller than their heads, had a point on the ground on the, on the bottom, and it had hooks on each side, and they had what they called the turtle maneuver. And they would get together and hook those shields together and do this, and the arrows of the enemy couldn't get down through that shield, and they just keep coming. They just, and you quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and, and, and they, they were so tough and they were so well-trained that their enemy would just throw everything down and run. The shield of faith. You can be wrapped up in it. And it's amazing how you and I, and I mean, all people are this way, we see things linear. God doesn't. He sees things like this. Amen. How many times do you suppose the devil had things going and, and the Lord just blocked it before it ever happened? Amen. Yes. On two different occasions that I remember, I, I, I remember the Lord saying, you, you thought you didn't do well in that, but you have no idea what was arrayed against you, and I say you were victorious all the way through it. Amen. Amen. Because it, I'm telling you, if God just opened our eyes and let us see all this mess, whoa, you just, it'd be tough to even get out of the house in the morning. Thank God he doesn't do that but we just keep fighting the good fight of faith. Stay on the God side of everything. Stay on the faith side of everything. Believe God. Stand. Stand all the time. Forgive all the time. Be in a forgiving mood all the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. I had to learn this, that before I go into a restaurant, before I, I, I go into uh, any place, forgive everybody in there. When you get up in the morning before you leave to go to work, leave there forgiving so that no matter what anybody does or said all day long, they're already forgiven. And you don't have to, you know, you, <laughs> you know, say something nasty to me. What's the matter with you? <laughs> well, glory to God. Just be ready to forgive all the time. And you practice it. Practice the presence of God. Talk to him all the time. You get in the car, visit with him, talk to him. So, now then, in And looking it through the eyes of faith. <laughs> We'd been to one of Brother Hagin's meetings, and John was little, he was in the back seat. And we were driving home. He said, Daddy! I said, What, John? He said, Isn't it wonderful we have three eyes? I said, what are you talking about? Well, he said, Brother Hagin's talking about seeing through the eye of faith. He said, I got these two eyes and I got a third eye. <laughs> I have a third eye. That's not too bad for a five-year-old. <laughs> he had three eyes. Praise God. So now, I want us to look in James chapter 1. We're right here in the book of Hebrews. One through seven. James, a servant or a slave of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12, 12 tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into divers temptations, or actually it says uh, temptations, tests, and trials. Knowing, you have to know something to do this. You have to know things. 
knowing this, that the trying of your faith works patience. The trying of your faith works patience. Now look. But let patience have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire wanting nothing. Amen. Don't get down in the mully grubs about it. I don't care how you'd like to frown and go on terrible about it. I had to learn to get over into joy and Keith Moore helped me do it. Yes, Amen. Amen. He was at my house. I don't know whether he even remembers it or not. But he said something, and, and, and I heard myself say, I don't know, something like, I, there's just not any joy or something like that. And I, when I heard it, I thought, that's a lie. The joy is one of the fruit of the Spirit. It is in me, and I'll never say it again, and I'm going to be joyous about things. I don't care whether I like it or not. I'm going to count it all joy. I have joy. Glory to God. Ha, ha, ha. I have the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is my strength. You need to go look that scripture up and look what was happening. The people were grieving. They were grieving. They were grieving. And a message was preached. And the joy of the Lord is your strength. So stop that grief. While I'm thinking about that, you remember when the great apostle said, sorrow not for we're not a people without hope. Go check that out. The Greek word wasn't sorrow. It's grief. Grieve not. Now, if God says grieve not, you can grieve not. Grief is a killer. Grief is a sense of loss. And there are people that have the idea that it's perfectly all right to just cry your insides out. No, it isn't. No. Study what God taught his people to do. There was a time to come together. And once that time was up, it was over. Just get over it. But I have seen it when, <coughs> when you purposely take authority over it. I didn't say it's easy. If it's easy, everybody would be doing it. But faith people need to do this because it is a commandment, whether we like it or feel like it or not. Amen. I was in a certain position one time, <coughs> and... Um, and I had the Lord to say, I want you to watch it. And I, I thought, well, okay. And people kept coming in the house. And uh, they kept walking up to this poor dear and say, oh, I'm so sorry. And she had just erupted. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, and she had erupted again. Oh, I'm so sorry. And here, bless her heart, she'd go again. And the Lord said, you just keep watching so I did. I kept watching, kept watching. And the Lord began to teach me. He said, they're passing the sorrow around. They're passing the grief around. And then I learned something. And I've checked it out since and learned that it is true. Here's what the Lord said to me. He said, this is not a bad feeling emotion because when the weeping comes without trying, it just gushes and just flows from deep within. He said, it's in, it's in the emotional area that is very much kin to sexual satisfaction because it, it, it just flows. But he said, it can be pumped dry. And this is what he said to me. He said, when all the potato salad's gone, 
and people have cleaned up all the dishes. And they've said their goodbyes. You leave that dear soul there by herself. And she's cried until she can cry no more. And then people tell her, well, you know, time will take care of it. He said, time won't take care of that. It has to be cast out. It's a spirit. He said, it's a spirit of grief, and grief is, 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 is next, he is the first cousin of the spirit of death. And that, and that, that spirit of grief will open the door for more death. And he said, I have churches full of it because of the way they act at home-going services. He said, make it a joyful time. And then, on the other hand, I've witnessed this and been able to be a part of this myself, where you go in and, and you just don't do that. You keep the joy up all the time. Now, on several occasions, one I'm thinking about, unexpected death, very close friend of mine, and so I walked in there, and, what the, the fa and I was doing the service that day. And so I walked in the back room of the church there. He was pastor of the church. And I just walked in there, and, and when I did, she just came over there to me, and I walked over there with a smile on her face, on my face, and all of a sudden I slapped my hands on her, and I yelled at the top of my voice, you spirit of grief, by God, you get your hands off of this woman of God! And she looked at me and just stood there and shook a little bit. And she said, it's gone. It is gone. She could tell when it left. Now, since then, I've seen that happen more than once. It is a spirit. So count it all joy. And then do what's necessary. Count it all joy. I'm telling you, James is a faith book. Count it all joy. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him, but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavers is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. A double-minded man. Faith one time and something else. And here is my illustration of that. In the storm, Peter said, Master, he called him Master. Then he said, don't you care that we perish? On one hand, Jesus is master. That's one mind. On the other hand, he doesn't care if we die. That's a double-minded man. You can't serve God money at the same time. That's a double-minded man or woman. You don't know which one to serve. Have you, have you ever been on the phone sometime to somebody else trying to talk to you? You can't talk to both of them at once. And you're trying and you, oh, what'd you say? What, what'd you, what'd you say? What'd you, what? <laughs> and you're trying to listen to God and the devil talking to you at the same time through somebody else. <laughs> Amen. So what does faith do? Faith says, okay, hush, I'll get to you in a minute. Now I need to talk to you. What did you say, Lord? All right, now that's what I'm going to do because that's what the book says. So, and you notice what he said now. Let not that man think he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways. Now, this little book, Oh, 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 I'll tell you, this little book of James is just absolutely magnificent in its strength and power. And in the second chapter, <laughs> verse 14, what doth it profit, my brethren, 
Though a man say he has faith and has not works, can faith save him? Now, Weymouth's translation. It went out of print a long time ago, and Kenneth Copeland Publications put it back into print. If you would like to have a Weymouth translation, we have them. I strongly suggest that you own one. Here's what Weymouth says. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and has not corresponding action? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body. What does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not corresponding action, is dead being alone or by itself. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, I have corresponding action. Show me your faith without your works, I will show you my faith because my action corresponds to it. Now that's, that clears that up. Just using the word works, it, it's, and people get, sometimes get confused. I thought we weren't supposed to get into works. No, we're supposed to get into action. That is a man that's not double-minded. He believes God. He gets on the promises, and he believes God, and then he acts as, acts as though he does. He acts. Here, I, like what, I like Brother Hagin's term. He said, act like the New Testament's true. Act like it's true. Amen. Just act like it's true. Praise God. Now then, receiving from God, and we read Hebrews eleven six, 6, impossible to please God without faith. Now, thy faith, Jesus said this again and again, thy faith has made you whole be it done unto you as you have believed. Believing was absolutely necessary for Jesus to do anything. Now he preached. He preached and he taught and he healed. But he did the preaching and the teaching, or actually the teaching, teaching, preaching, and healing. He, start, he did more teaching than anything else. Just go check it out. Everywhere he went, he taught. And in that area of his, in Nazareth, his own hometown, he could do no mighty works there because of their unbelief. Savior laid his hands on a few people with minor ailments, W. Vine said, and healed them. Now notice how important the laying on of hands is? When nothing else worked, that did. So what did he do? He went around all their villages teaching. I don't believe they all stayed in unbelief. He went around teaching in their villages. And even those that knew him from a child, they began, had to have begun to see that hey, there's something to this. Look at this. Amen. So we know that action, action, action is absolutely necessary. Before the fact, during the fact, and after the fact. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention, right here in the beautiful city of Fort Worth in the great state of Texas. You tend to yourself and you show love and you show compassion and you walk strong and you walk right because power follows that. Power follows holiness. Power follows righteousness. Power follows it. The power to deliver. The power to stand healed and whole and well. The power to have plenty. The power to be supplied. The power to snatch people out of hell follows a church that is separated unto him. We are supposed to be praying and I'm not supposed to be preaching, but I cannot help myself. This year, experience wide open faith at the Southwest Believers Convention. So come get a taste of Texas and save the date for August 1st through the 6th for the Southwest Believers Convention. Register today at kcm.org slash southwest. Hallelujah. <laughs> Many solutions to problems don't prevent the same issue from happening again. However, when you set out on a faith project, 
your faith in God will grow up and become greater than your problem so that you can live free from then on. In the audio series, Growing Your Faith, Kenneth Copeland teaches where our power as believers comes from and how to use that power like he did. From this series, you can learn core values for every believer, how to live by faith, walk in the light of the love of Jesus, be led by the Holy Spirit, and honor God. You have a farmer's heart through the Spirit of God, sowing spiritual seed and harvesting by the power of God. Jesus came to give you life. You have the same measure of the life of God that Jesus did. It just takes wisdom from God to use it and live the way that Jesus demonstrated, seeing your faith change the world around you. Get a good foundation for life on which to build your calling and purpose by growing your faith. Discover how to apply God's faith, His Word, and His very life to your circumstances and live the life He has for you. Request your free copy of Kenneth Copeland's MP3 series entitled Growing Your Faith. Go to kcm.org.uk forward slash TV special or call 01-225-787-310. This free offer is good for 30 days. Postage charges may apply. For more information, contact your regional office today. Hello, I'm Dwayne Munoz, Associate Dean of Kenneth Copeland Bible College. Prayer is the foundation of Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland pray for their partners every day. Every point of contact with our partners is covered in prayer, in emails, on phone calls, letters, product orders, on the broadcast, over the magazine, and at our events. KCM has a prayer department with full-time prayer ministers who are licensed and trained in the Word of God to pray in faith with you. So if you need prayer, call our prayer line today. And when they pray God's Word over you, write those scriptures down and take a stand on the truth of that promise. You have a covenant with God, and by faith, His promises are yours. Release your faith to receive those covenant promises for yourself. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were. So speak God's Word and His end result over your situation and make faith your way of life. This is Dwayne Munoz reminding you that God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Thank you for joining us on The Believer's Voice of Victory. Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want you to be victorious in life. Go to kcm.org.uk for free ministry resources and teaching tools to help you grow in faith and live in the blessing of the Lord. Stay connected with us through our website and all of our social channels to help us keep you informed and up to date on ministry outreaches, upcoming events, and specials that are available to you. Welcome to KCM.org, your study center for victory. Watch the BVOB broadcasts on demand. Search by topic or speaker and study along with the detailed daily broadcast notes. Or download the podcast version to listen on the go. Total immersion in the Word of God at home, in the car, at the gym, or in the waiting room. Find a schedule of KCM events and watch on demand. Search by date, speaker, or keyword for hours of inspiring truth from the Bible. KCM.org meets you where you are.